In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use graphs in order to find limits. There's not a whole lot to do here. We'll look at our general method for doing this and then take a look at a few examples to get the hang of doing this with graphs. So let's recall first how we can represent functions graphically. This is one way we have of representing a function. And it's going to contrast a little bit with what we looked at in uh, our earlier lesson on finding limits numerically. There we calculated particular values of the function for particular inputs and tried to see whether the function values were getting closer and closer to some number. Another way to do this is to use the graph of a function. And then we'll turn to how to use various sort of principles and formulas that will allow us to do this analytically that will come in a future lesson. So here's the basic idea for how to do this or the general method that we can use for finding limits graphically. Let's say we want to know the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Well, if we have a graph of our function f, we'll follow the graph closer and closer to the point where x equals a. And what we'll look at is the y coordinates of the graph or the function values represented by those y coordinates. And we'll try to see whether they are getting closer and closer to some number L. If they are, then L is the value of the limit as X approaches A of F of X. So the easiest way to see how to do this is with some examples. We'll start with some fairly straightforward ones, and then we'll turn to some that are a little more unusual or a little more sort of exotic. Here's our first example. This involves a very straightforward quadratic function. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 2. So to do this, we're going to look at the graph of the function defined by x squared minus 2. So there's the graph of the equation y equals x squared minus 2. It's a parabola opening up with its vertex at 0, negative 2. And now start at a, some point on the graph and move closer and closer along the parabola and let your x coordinate get closer and closer to two. What you'll find as you do that is that as you let x get closer and closer to two, y is getting closer and closer to two as well. So the limit as x approaches two of x squared minus two is two, done. That's all we had to observe about our graph. Now, the point 2, 2 is plotted here, but in a sense, that's kind of a red herring. It's not essential to finding the limit. Let's take a look at a slightly different example um, in which we don't have a point on the graph at the value of x that we're interested in. So here's our second example. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. One thing to note here is that if x is equal to 0, <clears throat> that function expression is undefined. Try plugging 0 in for x, you'll see that you get 0 over 0 um, as the apparent output of the function. Here's the graph of the function. So this is the graph of y equals x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Now there's the graph. And notice there's what we call a hole at the point 0, 2. So that point is not on the graph. But if you pick any other point on the graph and start moving closer and closer to where x equals 0 from that point, if you're moving along the graph, then what you'll find is that your y coordinates are getting closer and closer and closer to 2. So even though 0, 2 is not on the graph, the limit as x approaches 0 of that function is still equal to 2. That second example illustrates something important about limits. When we're looking at a limit, the limit as x approaches a of some function f of x, we don't care about the value of f of a. What we're interested in 
is what the function is doing for values of x that are close to a, not equal to a. This is one of the things that can be a little tricky about working with limits when you first encounter them, is getting used to this idea. So don't give up trying to find a limit just because, say, f of a is undefined and you're trying to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x. The fact that f of a is undefined does not mean that the limit is undefined. In fact, many times the limit will be defined. So there will still often be a limit, even in cases where the function is undefined at the point where x equals a. Now it can happen, and this happened in our first example with that um, quadratic function, it can happen that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. Sometimes that will happen. We will look more closely in a little while at when that happens and why it happens and what that tells us about our function. That'll be part of our analytical study of limits. Here's a third example. This one involves a piecewise defined function. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, given this piecewise definition of f, where f of x is equal to 1 if x is not equal to 2, and 0 if x is equal to 2. Here's a graph of our function. So notice here it's basically a horizontal line. It's basically the line y equals 1, except at the point where x equals 2, suddenly our function jumps down slightly to the point two zero before coming back to that horizontal line and continuing on its way. So there's the graph of our function. And notice we have an open circle at two one, that point is not on the graph of the function and a closed circle at uh, two zero showing that that point is on the graph. Remember when we're finding the limit as X approaches two of this function, we don't care what F of two is. So ignore the fact here that f of 2 is equal to 0. It's not relevant for finding this limit. What we want to look at is what's happening to our function values when x is getting very, very close to 2. And when we move along the graph, getting closer and closer to where x equals 2, what we find is that f of x, or y, I say is very close to one. In fact, it's exactly equal to one. And so as we're moving closer and closer to where x equals two, based on the pattern we see, we expect to end up where y equals one, even though this function does this weird thing and jumps down to two zero when we get there. But the important thing for right now is that because f of x is staying at one as x gets closer and closer to two, the value of the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to 1. And that's true even though f of 2 is equal to 0, not 1. So this is an example of how a limit and a function value can diverge or disagree in a case like this. Here's one more example. The heading here sort of gives away what's going to happen, but let's take a look at it. We're going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. So here's a graph of y equals 1 over x squared. Now, again, think about what's going to happen if we try to find this limit. We're going to start at some point on the graph, it can be wherever you want, and we're going to start moving closer and closer to where x equals 0. So we're going to be moving closer and closer to the, the y axis here. And what we'll find happens is that as we do that, as we get closer to where x equals zero, our function values just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can see that the graph is sort of shooting upward along the y-axis on either side of the axis. So there's no particular number that our function values are getting closer to as x gets closer to zero. And so we'll say in this case that the limit as x approaches 0 of this function 1 over x squared does not exist or is undefined. And that's because there's no number that 1 over x squared is approaching as x approaches 0. 
Our next example is going to contrast three different but similar functions. So here we've got three functions represented by three slightly different graphs. Let's start with the one on the right. The graph on the right is of the function defined by x plus one. So this is an ordinary linear function, slope of one going through one on the y-axis. And there's the graph. It's an unbroken straight line. In the middle, we have a function called g. g is defined piecewise. And you can see that the graph here is basically the same line, except at the point where x equals 1, our y-coordinate is 1, not 2, like we would expect from, uh, from the rest of the line. And the third function, the one on the far left, calling it f here, also has more or less a straight line as a graph. But at that point where x equals 1, our graph just sort of skips over. There is no point on that graph where x equals 1. And that's because if you look at the definition of that function below or the analytical representation of it, when x is equal to 1, f of x is undefined. So we have three different functions. And the value of each function at 1 is different from what we get from the others. f of 1 is undefined. That's on the far left. G of one is equal to one. We can see that in the middle graph. And H of one is equal to two. So these three functions disagree with each other about what's going on when X equals one. But the limits of all three of them as X approaches one are the same. They're all equal to two. And that's because if we're standing anywhere on any of those graphs other than where X equals one, and we start moving closer to where x equals 1, we will find that our y coordinates are getting closer and closer to 2. Only the graph on the right actually does what we expect it to do there. It actually lands on the point 1, 2. The other two do weird things where x equals 1. But again, for limits, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's happening as we get closer to where x equals 1. And in all three cases, we find that our y coordinates are getting closer to 2. Therefore, each of those three limits is equal to two.